like to post there in the chat column. Okay, so this meeting is about a foundation in presence. It's about awakening. So whenever I speak of awakening, we have to ask ourselves, what are we awakening from? What are we awakening to? And the truth is we're awakening from what I call the world of the mind, which is a very limited level of consciousness, that we've all been functioning at this limited level of consciousness since the beginning of time, lifetime after lifetime, lust within the world of the mind, which is the world of the remembered past and the imagined future. That's what it is. It's all your memories, all your imaginings, all your fantasies, all your hopes, dreams, desires, all your past experiences, all your opinions, concepts, ideas, beliefs, make up this world of the mind. And you come to know who you are based on your experiences, your life within the world of the mind, the past and future. It's important to know that it's a world of illusion in the sense that none of it's real. If you're in the past, in the world of memory, belief, idea, uh, imagination, where is that real? It's just a part of functioning within the world of the mind. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but there are significant consequences. So we're awakening from the limited world of the mind. Sometimes I call it your story. It's the story that's been unfolding in your life, as your life, over many, over many lifetimes actually, but let's just focus on this lifetime. Sometimes I call it your dream, because it's not real, it's a dream within a field of dreams. Uh, I often refer to the world of the mind as a field of dreams, and the dream that we're all lost in is occurring within this field of dreams. So, um, <clears throat> it's also uh, a world of separation, illusion and separation. What are we separate from? Well, we're separate from the truth of who we are. We're separate from the truth of life, the truth of love, the truth of oneness. We're separate from the truth of God. And at the deepest level, we're separate from heaven on earth. And so awakening really means awakening from the past and future world of the mind, the dream, the story, from uh, from that world of the past and future into the present moment. It's awakening from s separation into oneness and from illusion into truth. And all of this will be made clearer as I proceed through this meeting. Now, I'm going to give you a very brief introduction to what is the foundation of, uh, uh, of presence and uh, how, do we, how do we bring that about in our lives? How do we shift the foundation of our lives from the world of the mind into the world of now. How do we accomplish that? Uh, and <clears throat> that's what this teaching is all about. How do we free ourselves from that dream and awaken into the truth of who we are, the truth of life and love? How do, how do we do that? Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to briefly talk about that and I have a bunch of questions that have been submitted uh, uh, to us, and so I'll answer as many of those questions as I can. We don't have a lot of time together. Uh, I would like to invite everyone to be still. It's very difficult to become present if you're moving around unconsciously all the time. Just bring yourself present. Bring yourself still. Be still. Be present with your body breathing. Be more present. If, if you hear what I'm saying from the mind, it's a very limited value to you. But if you're present, and you hear what I'm saying in presence, I'm speaking from presence, you're hearing from presence, then we're in a whole different dimension. And it's so much more powerful and more effective. So, <clears throat> I'm going to begin by sharing with you a very, very simple key to coming out of the past and future world of the mind into the present moment. And it's so simple, some of you might even get annoyed with me because it's so simple. Like, why have we been struggling for lifetime after lifetime? So here's the simple key. When you're in the mind, in the dream, in the story, you're somewhere in the past or the future. That's just how it is. I'm not saying it's good or bad, right or wrong, that's just the simple truth. Now, in order to come out of the past and future, you just bring yourself present with something that's here in the moment with you. 
If you can see it in this moment, you can be present with it. If you can hear it, feel it, taste it, touch it, smell it, in this moment you can be present with it. Now, the moment you're truly present with something that's here in the moment, you must come out of the mind because mind is past future. Now you're present. Now, here's what becomes very interesting. Any moment you're truly present, you are an awakened being. It's that simple. When you get pulled back into the dream, you're no longer an awakened being. And being an awakened being doesn't go beyond this moment because there is only this moment. So <clears throat> you'll discover that being present is remarkably simple. You can close your eyes and be present with your body breathing. Let's do that right now. I can't see you, but you can see me. So everyone, close your eyes just for a few moments. No, don't look for an outcome. There's no hidden agenda. You're not trying to get enlightened. You're just closing your eyes. And now just be present with your body breathing. Your body breathes in, your body breathes out. And you are the one who is present in this moment, aware of the body breathing. If a thought arises, you notice it very gently. You don't reject it. You don't believe in it. You just notice it, you say thinking, then back to the body breathing. And slowly, slowly, the space between the thoughts gets wider and wider. And you're able to uh, settle more and more deeply into extended periods of presence. And there eventually comes a point where there's a shift in, in, in who you are. Before awakening, your home is the world of the mind. That's where you live. That's where you engage with the world, with other people from within the mind. But it's very, very difficult and conflicted if it's all occurring within the world of the mind. So the shift is to presence. As you become present, you open into love. You open into acceptance. There's no judgment. You open into compassion. You're um, <clears throat> empowered from within. You exist in the realization of oneness. This is who you are when you're present. And you come out of the mind just by tuning into, reshift, shifting your focus to something that is actually here in the moment with you. If your eyes are closed, it could be your body breathing. It could be the sound you hear. It could be the feeling of your feet touching the floor. It doesn't matter what it is. Okay, so... That's step one of this teaching, learning the art of being present. Step two is a little more challenging because it involves arising in mastery of your mind and ego. We have to take full responsibility for all the ways we're pulled out of presence, all the ways we, we, we keep ourselves uh, in, in the dream, in the world of the mind. Um, who are we when we're caught in the dream? How does that happen? We have to slowly and gradually and gently become masters of the mind and ego. I can't go into all the details of that. There's, I set it out very, very clearly in step two of this teaching. There are four aspects to step two. The first is the resistance of the ego. The second is judging and denying who you've become. The third is, are all the repressed feelings um, that you've been carrying with you since childhood. The fourth is losing yourself in others. You have to be aware of all the limiting beliefs programmed into your mind when you were very young. I'm not loved. I'm not good enough. I can't do it. Um, I'm all alone. There's no one here for me. We all have several of these limiting beliefs programmed into the mind from childhood. And these limiting beliefs play havoc with our lives and our relationships. So... It's all a part of step two, bringing it all to conscious awareness. Not fixing, not judging, just bringing everything into conscious awareness. Who am I when I'm lost in the dream? What holds me in the dream? What pulls me out of presence? How do I keep myself in the dream? What are the limiting beliefs in the dream? What are the repressed feelings that I'm living with? How do I lose myself in others? And finally... In what way do I still judge myself or others? Because I can promise you, as long as you're involved in judgment, you will not awaken. Judgment 
is the most powerful force of resistance to keep you in the world of the mind. So we have to transcend judgment in our lives. Now I know this might sound like a lot, but it's actually not. It's remarkably simple. Once you've mastered the art of relaxing and settling into presence. Now what do you feel as you settle into presence? What does that feel like? Well, first of all, the most consistent feeling when you're present is peace and silence. It's, it's like the, the, entire, the entire moment is filled with peace and silence and love and wonder, a sense of wonder, a sense of the mystery as you become more deeply present. Then you open into oneness. There is, so much, there is so much available for us as we become present. Then as we settle into presence, it enables us to then begin the healing process that is step two, the healing and liberating process, because we have to liberate ourselves from that dream and, and find ourselves fundamentally established in presence. When you're present, you've opened into an entirely different dimension of who you are. So it's really a continual play of these two steps. Um, no matter where you are or what you're doing in your life, you're going for a walk, you notice your thinking. Okay, that's all right, you can keep thinking if you like, but you also have a God-given right to notice your thinking and then very subtly adjust your focus to something that's here in the moment with you. If you can see it, hear it, feel it, taste it, touch it or smell it, you can be present with it. That's all that's involved. You notice your thinking, then bring yourself present. The more often you, you remember presence and bring yourself present, um, the more it will open within you. It's that simple. Now, here's one very important point. As you notice your thinking, you mustn't judge or reject the thoughts. That's absolutely not going to lead you to presence. You just notice them very gently, very friendly. You just notice it and then you shift your focus to, focus to being present with something that is here. You don't reject or judge anything about yourself, about life, about the mind, the ego. If you reject or judge your ego or you think you can get rid of your ego, maybe by getting enlightened you get rid of the ego, I can promise you the ego is, is paying attention to all of that. And the ego is not going to allow that to happen. So it's all about coming into right relationship. From presence, right relationship with your ego, the inner child, the limiting beliefs, the repressed feelings, and all the ways you lose yourself in others. Even right relationship with the energy of judgment whenever it arises within you. You just don't try and fix it. Don't try and stop it. You just say, judging. If you notice your thinking, thinking. If you notice your blaming, blaming. You see, you're just revealing it all. You're just owning, acknowledging, confessing. Whoever you've become, living within the dream for most, almost all of your life, if not all of your life. Okay, so there's so much more I can tell you, but I have a lot of questions here and uh, I would like to answer some of them. So let me have a look at the questions. Okay, the first one. Uh, is from Sonia from the Netherlands. So, hi Sonia, I hope you're watching. Uh, dear Leonard, thank you for being. And then the question is, how does being present heal your past? Sincere greetings, Sonia. Well, that's a very interesting question and it's incredibly mysterious. I've been uh, doing this teaching and working with people at very, very deep levels for 40 years, believe it or not, even I can't believe that. Um, and, you know, amazing things are possible as we become present. Presence is transcendent of time. It's transcendent of the past and future. When you're present, it's transcendent of the dream. Now, all your wounds and problems and issues that are in need of healing, they all exist within the dream because they're from the past. And you have very limited access because it's all a dream, it's imaginary. How do you heal and fix a dream? Even attempting to heal and fix a dream will take you further into the dream. 
So that's not the right approach. The right approach is to be present. Now, then it becomes very interesting. The present moment is a doorway to the true past and the true future. It's the true, the, the past, the true past and true future have nothing to do with what you remember or what you imagine into the future. That's not past and future. The true past and future is accessible through the doorway of the present moment. And then when you go through that doorway, now you're accessing the true future, you, or the true, I should say the true past. Now you can go into the true past. You can actually go back there and intervene and do healing from within that past life experience or that childhood experience if it's this lifetime. It's really not a big deal, but it's profoundly mysterious. I find myself constantly amazed when that uh, opens up uh, as a part of whatever's happening. Uh, it usually happens in a private session with me, but often in the retreats as well. So, uh, and I'm not saying that always happens, and it's certainly not always necessary. The most important thing is for you to recognize when you're caught in the dream and, and the distinction between when you're caught in the dream and when you're present. When you're present, your mind is silent. You feel very, very present with what is here. So, uh, Sonia, um, <clears throat> yes, profound healing is possible uh, once you've reached or, or opened the doorway that is the present moment. It's miraculous. It's the doorway to oneness. It's the doorway to God. It's the doorway to healing of the past. And it's, always a, it's also a doorway to your true future. This is where it gets very interesting. Your true future does not has nothing to do with what you imagine with your mind. Things never work out the way we think they will when we imagine the future. It's always different. So, um, so here's the interesting thing. Your true future unfolds through the doorway of the present moment. Every moment you're truly present, it's like you're inviting your true future to be here now. Not in the future, but now. And what is your true future? I will tell everyone who's viewing this now, your true future. Your true future is to be a fully awakened being, living in oneness, living in heaven on earth, uh, one with God, one with, with the trees, the flowers, just living in oneness, aware of the eternal nature of our existence, to be a fully awakened being just like Buddha and Jesus. That's your true future and your true, true destiny. The only question is, when will this occur? Not in the future that you imagine within your mind. It will begin to reveal itself the more, um, the more deeply and, and, uh, and fundamentally present you are. It'll just start to reveal itself, the awakened you, the fully awakened you. And then there's a process of integration that occurs as you live your life. The awakened you, the future you, that fully awakened you, slowly integrating into you, that you that's participating in the world of time, living over one, one lifetime. But even then, even as you're living in the world of time, playing in the world of time, now you know where the truth is. It is here in the present moment not in the world of the mind, not in the dream. So even though you're playing in the dream, you don't get lost there. Even though you're playing in time, you know what you're going to do tomorrow, you can remember yesterday, you can plan tomorrow, that's okay, no problem. You just don't go so far into the world of the mind, the dream, the world of time, to such an extent that you get lost there. Because once you get lost there, it is incredibly difficult to find your way out. We should have all awakened when Buddha was on planet Earth. We should have all awakened when Jesus was on planet Earth. But we missed it. Now it's time for us to realize, make real our true destiny. That's the invitation here with this teaching and for many teachings that are now opening up around the world. Okay, so um, I'm going to go to question two, Alex, and I hope you're all enjoying this so far, everybody who's watching. And you know, it's fine to make comments, but it's more important to be present with me as I speak. Just be present with me. You can have your eyes open, you can have your eyes closed, it doesn't matter. But I can assure you, I can't tell you anything that you don't already know. The truth exists within you, just as much as it does within me, Jesus, Buddha, or Ramana, or anyone else you care to name. The truth exists within you, but 
you can't access it with the mind. It only becomes accessible and available to you as you become more deeply present. And then it arises from the silence at the center of your being. You don't even need to remember anything. You don't need to understand anything. I live in a state of not knowing. And I love that. I, love in a, I live in a state of not knowing, um, which then every now and then, I mean, whenever it's called upon, knowing arises. I don't know how that happens. But it's always there. Um, okay, so uh, <clears throat> question number two from Alex. Hi, Leonard. Quite a while ago, you spoke about keeping a little distance between us and God. Can you speak more about this? Thank you. Well, Alex, that's taking me to the deepest level, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure whether that we're supposed to go to the deepest level in this particular meeting, but you asked the question. It's, it's an incredibly mysterious question and answer. And you cannot fathom this with the mind. You should not even attempt to. But you can be present and silent and just feel what I'm saying. So, we have to go back to the eternal dilemma of God. And the eternal dilemma of God, the, the eternal dilemma of God, is essentially the eternal dilemma of oneness. God is one. God is the one in the all. This is God's essential nature, the one in the all. Oneness, perfect, eternal. Oneness, perfect, eternal, is-ness. The dilemma of one, the dilemma of God, is that one cannot know itself. So who are you, Alex? Who are, all, who are we all? We're that part of God that journeys into the separation, to separate from God, and it's in our return, in the vibration of our return, I am, God is. I am, God is. I am, God is. It's like, I am in nothing. God is in everything. That's actually a very true statement. When you are so utterly present, silent, nothing of you from the past or future. You're just utterly here. But you're here with love, with gratitude, with generosity towards whatever is in the present moment with you. That's when God responds. I am, God is. At that deep level of silence, suddenly God appears in everything. Now, how do you know it's God? What does it, what does it look like? What, does it, what do you feel it has? What does it seem like? The only thing I can tell you is the feeling and presence of God is palpable. But also the present moment seems to be everything in the present moment, all the content within the present moment, the trees, the flowers, the, the dog, the cat, the bird, the sky, whatever it is. Everything seems somewhat illuminated from within. And it feels and seems like it's illuminated with the presence of God. That's all I can say. And I know when that first happened to me many years ago in 1981, I was an agnostic, if not an atheist, prior to this moment of suddenly God opening up in my, in my moment, in the moment of now, suddenly. And I knew, I knew instantly it was God. I don't know how I knew, but I knew. And I'm still not a believer in God. I do not believe in God. But if I'm present, I know God. How do I know God? I don't even know how I know. I'm just present. I sense the presence of God in all things present. Can I speak to God? Yes, of course I can, as long as I'm present and as long as I keep it incredibly simple. So... Uh, <clears throat> Why do I say keep a little distance between you and God, Alex? Because God's gone to an awful lot of trouble to get you here. And, f and you've been through an awful lot of trouble to get yourself to a level of presence where you can accomplish what I'm speaking of, where you become a mirror for God, a mirror for existence, existence reflecting ex existence to itself, um, <clears throat> presence reflecting presence to itself, God reflecting God, to God's self. That's about as good as it gets. And then in a very strange way, God's eternal dilemma of oneness is resolved in you. This vibration in oneness. I am, God is. I am, it is. I am, the present moment is. It's kind of like that. I am, God is. I can't really go beyond that. I can't explain it beyond that. <coughs> 
but I can tell you, you don't know what I'm speaking about if you're hearing with me, with me, if you're hearing me with your mind. We have to go to a much deeper level of presence, and then you will know from your own experience what I'm talking about. And I'm not saying that's the easiest thing, but it's much, much easier and much more simple than people realise. And it has to be because we humans are so damned remedial. Okay, let's go to the next question. Oh, this is question number three, Marion from Arizona. Hello Marion, I do hope you're watching and I'm going to answer your question for you. Hi Leonard, thanks for all you do. Do you have a transcript of the wonderful presentation Liberating Jesus? It would be great to have it to keep and read and review. Thank you. Well, I've got a little secret for you. I think I do. Bear with me for one moment. Okay, Marion, check this out. This is the latest book. It's not released yet. Liberating Jesus, What Would He Say If He Returned Today? by Leonard Jacobson, provocative... I can't read that backwards, but anyway. Uh, this will be released in about a month. So you can... It's got... It's got the story of my awakenings in it. It's got um, the script of the play, Liberating Jesus, fully in there. And it's got a whole bunch of questions and answers. So um, if you want to pre-order this, no, I, I think we have to wait until it goes on Amazon. Because uh, that's how we sell our books now. Okay, so um, I think that answers your question, Marianne. And uh, enjoy. And I love to hear from people who have either watched the movie, Liberating Jesus, or read the book. I really like to hear how it impacts people because, uh, as you know, Marion, it's a very controversial and somewhat provocative book. But anyway, thank you for your question. So let's pause and just be present together. You can have your eyes open and just have the sense of gazing into my eyes. I am here. You are here. I am present, you are present. I have no expectation of you, I have no judgment, no opinion of you. I'm just here. In this moment I have no story because my mind is silent. If a thought arose within my mind, I would not consider that a problem in any way. I would simply notice it and say, thinking, and back to the body breathing or just back to being present. It's so easy and it's so friendly and it's so effortless. The biggest mistake that people on a path of awakening make is even the thought that with awakening the ego has gotten rid of. I can assure you that's, that's a terrible mistake. It won't work. No one can defeat the ego. Not Buddha, not Jesus, not Ramana, not Leonard, not anyone. So if you can't defeat the ego, how do you overcome the ego's resistance to your awakening? The answer is you come into right relationship with the ego. And that is only possible when you're present. Because when you're present, you are love. You're literally the energy of love. It has nothing to do with who or what you love. It's you. You're the love. You are love. You are acceptance in the sense there's no judgment. You accept the present moment as it is. Your compassion. You're empowered in true power. So it's all these energies of love, acceptance, compassion that you bring to the ego. And it'll take a little while, but slowly, slowly the ego will relax. Slowly, slowly it will surrender. The need to pull you out of presence. When that happens, you'll be amazed by the level of liberation that opens up within you. You're free. But your freedom has to be based in presence. In the dream, no freedom. The mind is a prison. And the prison warden is your own ego. So you better be, you better be nice to the prison warden if you want the prison warden to open the door. On the other hand, that doesn't mean you allow yourself 
to be deceived any longer by your ego. You see through its tricks so easily once you've established a little mastery in presence. You don't even need to think about what I'm saying, you don't need to remember it. The only thing that's really uh, significant is, are you present in this moment or not? And that's a question you can ask yourself every moment of your life if you so choose. Am I present or not? If you're not present, make that shift. Now you are. It's instant. There's no practice. You can't meditate your way to presence because the present moment is already here. So many people are seeking on this path of awakening. But how do you seek something that's already here? It doesn't make sense. The present moment is already here. Why would you seek it? Much better to relax and focus into it. Be present with it. So simple. Piece of cake. And when you're present, hopefully your mind is becoming more silent and you're feeling more and more peace. And maybe sometimes bliss arises. That's beautiful. Enjoy it. It'll pass. Sometimes ecstasy will arise. Beautiful. Enjoy it. It will pass. Revelations can arise from the silence. Beautiful. Write them down if you, if you want to, but then don't hold on to them. All sorts of amazing revelations and ahas come up. That's what happened to me during... Uh, uh, all of my awakenings, different revelations about the nature of the human condition, what happened to us, how do we find our way back to the truth. Okay, so let me look at the uh, list of questions. Okay, so uh, number four, Shell from North Carolina. What is the message or lesson COVID is trying to tell us? What is the hidden gift? Okay, so um, <clears throat> for me, there, there are a number of uh, elements involved in, in my answering your question. First of all, it gives us an opportunity to separate from each other. Because the truth is, humanity, all of us, we're all hopelessly lost and entangled in each other. You know, um, if I need you to love me, I'm getting entangled with you. If I, if you need me to uh, not judge you, or to ju if you judge me, you are getting entangled in me. If you have an opinion about me, that's an entanglement. If I have an opinion about you, an expectation. If I need you to love me, like me, accept me, be impressed by me, I'm entangled with you. If I'm trying to prove to you that I'm good enough, I'm entangled in you. We're all hopelessly entangled. Then we get lost in each other's stories, we no longer know who we are, right? If I'm entangled in you, how can I know who I am? How can, I, how can you know who you are if we're all mixed up together? So we, we, come back to, to get, we come back to ourselves. In other words, we have to separate in order to come to oneness. So COVID prevents us an excellent opportunity to separate. Now, and come back to ourselves. Now, I'm not saying it's always going to be easy, but you will have to encounter yourself. Who are you really? <laughs> uh, it's a good opportunity for that. The other opportunity that COVID brings to us is the opportunity to embrace true responsibility and greater awareness. Like in the height of the pandemic, when it was really bad here in America, and I'm sure in other countries, you had to be so careful. What, what you touched, who was close to you, who was around you, at least I was, because I'm of the age group, and I don't look like it, but I am of the age group where you have to be careful. So, um, so I was, I was very careful, and so were all the people that were around me, and uh, um, I remember for months I would go for my morning walks um, and never see anyone, I loved it. Or I'd get in my car and go for a drive, there was no other cars on the road, I loved that, I loved the quietness of it. But um, it's an opportunity to be responsible for yourself. If you're careful, if you're responsible and careful, I can promise you, it's very unlikely you'll get COVID. Um, but you know, you don't want to live the rest of your life being that careful. But we do want, do want to live the rest of our lives being that uh, present and responsible. So the finally, I would say, I see it. I see COVID as an opportunity, as a huge, huge, big reset. A reset of the way we humans live upon this planet in every possible way. Our education, our social 
security, all of it, everything. Uh, the way we work, the way we think, the way we engage with each other. But most importantly, the way we relate to the natural world and the way we relate to each other. Uh, particularly the way we relate to each other, relate to people who are different in any way. Uh, whether it's nationality, colour, race, it doesn't matter. It's an opportunity for a big reset. The only problem is we need a few more very awakened people in charge of the reset. And I don't see that happening. Even, even the fine, there's going to be a financial reset, an economic reset, all sorts of resets going on. But it would be wonderful it could be, if it could be a reset that brings us into alignment with awakened consciousness. That would be my prayer. And I hope you would all join me in that prayer. May, I, may the reset that's currently going on be in, be in alignment with awakened consciousness. Now, what did I just do then? I'm going to confess. I was a little thirsty and I wasn't completely present when I lifted the glass to my mouth. So I actually chose to repeat the uh, movement with greater presence. <clears throat> now, the, why am I telling you that? Because that's possible for you to do as well. Just be aware of whether you're present or not, even in the movement of your body. You can be present through your eyes, present with what you see, through your ears, present with what you hear. I think that's why Jesus kept saying those with eyes to see and ears to hear, because most people's eyes and ears are blocked, dramatically blocked. They can't hear anything that might contradict their, their beliefs uh, or their, what they're familiar with. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I forgot what I was saying. Okay, let's go to question number five from Michelle in New York. It has been said by many non-duality teachers that all thoughts are not true. What about a thought regarding the present moment like it is raining out? You've looked out the window and you see the rain. Well, okay. But my question is very simple. Why do you need to think that? You can see it. You can just be present. You can be one with the rain. Why do you need to have that thought? But if you do have that thought, what I would do if I had that thought is Yes, yes, thank you for that wonderful commentary, that wonderful observation. Thank you so much. And back to presence and the rain. Be present with the rain. There's a level where you can experience the rain beyond its label, beyond knowing what it's actually uh, called or calling it rain. You're just utterly immersed in the energy of rain, the movement of rain, everything around the rain, inside the rain. You can become one with the rain. What a magnificent experience. But technically speaking, the thought is still arising within the mind. I'm not saying it's a problem. I'm not saying it should stop. But, but technically, it's not necessary. You don't need that thought because you're already experiencing the rain. And that's what we do. Rather than have direct experience of anything, the mind comes in and quickly defines it rain, tree, flower, uh, God, uh, Jesus, whatever it is, the mind's got it all figured out. We don't really need to be present with anything. So I would say, okay, next time you, your mind says, it's raining, say, thank you so much, you're brilliant, you're a genius. Now, come back to the rain. And that's the same with anything. Every leaf moving on it. When you go for a walk and you're walking past a tree, there's a little bit of a breeze. Know this, every leaf moving on every tree is waving to you. It's saying, here I am, would you not be present with me? I've been waiting for you forever. Please be present with me. Every flower is saying to you, look how beautiful I am. What more can I do to attract your attention? Is your dream that interesting that you refuse to be present with me? Come out of your dream. Discover who I really am. For you see me as a flower. You see me as a tree. But that's not who I really am. I am really God in the form of a flower. I am God in the form of a tree. It's the body of God manifested as the body of God. Everything in, in the present moment is manifest, is the body of God manifested. There's only one place in all the existence where God does not exist. 
Nobody wants to hear this. God does not exist in the world of the human thinking mind. Why would I say that? Because the world of the human thinking mind is an illusion and God is not an illusion. Then we do a very interesting thing. The only place where God is not is the world of the mind, which we're all lost in, imprisoned within. So then to comfort ourselves, we invent God in our image. We believe in God to comfort us, not realizing that that just takes us further and further into the dream. Those who believe in God will never know God. Belief in God is an obstacle to knowing God. All belief is of the mind. All understanding is of the mind. I'm not saying all your beliefs and, my, and all your understandings have to go. Of course not. If, when you're living within the dream, within the world of time, no problem. But in the context of awakening, understanding has no place. That's why Jesus said or referred to the peace that passeth understanding. He was giving us a clue. Everything he he, he was giving us non-stop clues. But, but we just didn't get it at the time. Hopefully we get it now. So um, the thoughts are not true. Your beliefs are definitely not true. You can, I mean, have your beliefs. Keep them. Go, go to the coffee shop with your friends and pontificate about your latest spiritual theories and your concepts, your beliefs, or your ideas. Talk politics. Talk whatever you like. Talk philosophy, uh, anything, psychology. But at the end of the conversation, talk spiritually. But at the end of the conversation, before you leave the cafe, you say to everybody, Thank you so much for listening. I really enjoyed sharing all of that. Uh, I hope you all know that not one word of it was true. But thank you for listening anyway. I had a good time. That's about it. So where is the truth? It's in the silence. It's in the presence. It's you being present with what is here in the moment with you. That's about as close as you get to the truth. Then whatever opens up from that is not your business. It's God's business. If bliss opens up, don't hold on to it. If you have an ecstatic enlightenment experience that can last for minutes, days, weeks, even months, just say thank you. Don't hold on to it. Don't try and hold on to it. Don't look for it. Just focus on being present. That's all you need. If you if you if you are truly if you if you make pre being present your first priority in your life, you will awaken. It's that simple. Okay, I'm going to the next question then. I'm sorry I can't see you all because I'm sure there are some wonderful comments that I'd like to read or even questions you're submitting. Maybe we'll do that in our next meeting somehow. We'll figure out the technicalities of that. And uh, hopefully my glasses are not reflecting too much. In fact, I'm going to change them. Um, not sure if that's better. That might be a little better. Okay. Yeah, now can I read? Okay. Um, okay. Number question number six. Nick from Kansas City. Hi, Nick. Uh, hi, Leonard. Thank you for your teaching. It is very difficult to stay present as the mind is constantly pulling. And not getting identified is a constant struggle. My question is, if I'm in a bad situation, should I move away or stay with that bad experience? Moving away from that decision, from moving away is hard to do because of fear of the unknown. Whereas staying present is painful <laughs> because of what's happening. Which pill to take? I hope you all understood that. Um, <clears throat> What, uh, what Nick is saying is, you know, we all find ourselves in difficult situations. It's quite easy for me to find myself in a difficult situation. That, so what do you do? Do you stay in that difficult situation or do you leave? And most people, are li like relationship is a great example of it, but there are many, work could be a work situation, a relationship situation, or some other situation, maybe your relationship with your parents, your siblings, your friends, it doesn't matter. But... Uh, do you stay in it or do you leave? Uh, and uh, the, the most um, common reason for not leaving is fear of the unknown, as Nick pointed out. But to stay in it, how long do you stay in a situation which, which is difficult, painful, uncomfortable, uh, all of that? How long do you stay in it? My answer to that is stay in it long enough to learn your lesson. 
that's it. Don't get caught up in blaming the other person or thinking the other person is responsible. Take responsibility for whatever is arising within you. That's such a fundamental key. And look into the mirror. What is the relationship? What is that situation, that difficult situation, reflecting to you about who you've become in the world of time, in the dream? What is it reflecting to you about the limiting beliefs that might be still functioning unconsciously within your mind? What is it reflecting to you about the level of projection you're projecting onto the person you're dealing with? Um, <clears throat> uh, what is still unhealed within you? What are your expectations? What are your resentments? All of this. What are your judgments of yourself, of others? It can all come up. So you've got to look into the mirror that is that situation or that relationship. Look into the mirror. Who have I become? Where am I caught? What's still unhealed? What are the judgments? Just pay attention. When you've learned your lessons, either the relationship will transform miraculously, the situation will transform, or you leave. No big deal. And uh, people speak about the unknown. But I want to tell you, the present moment is not really as unknown as people would, tell, would say. And let me explain. Right now, I am present. Right now, there's really nothing outside of this moment in me or even near me. I'd have to go into my, my, my mind and, and, and be aware of it. But right now, my present moment experience is limited to sitting here. I'm looking into a camera, I can see my computer on the side, I'm not looking at it, I'm aware of the glass on the table, I don't, I'm not focused on it, I'm focused on the camera at the moment. But I can shift my focus, now I'm focused on the glass. Now I'm focused on the microphone, now I'm back to the camera, no big deal. But I'm just here. But I know what is here. I don't know it with my mind, I don't need to label it, but I'm here with it. I can see what is here. I'm with what is here. I know it. It's not unknown. I know it. I just can't define it or use my mind to know it. But I know it so deeply, so intimately. I know what is here. There's a little black bag over there uh, next to a flower, a little flower pot. If I become very present with that black bag, it's a black computer bag, I can promise you it's going to start feeling like a friend. It's, I'm going to start feeling love for it. I'm going to start experiencing oneness. That black bag gives me the opportunity to be present with it. That's how simple it is. The flower next to the black bag. I can suddenly have a beautiful experience of oneness and bliss just by tuning into that flower or the black bag. It doesn't matter what it is. This Kleenex box, I talked about this yesterday in a, an interview I did. Um, this, this Kleenex box has more power to bring you present than Buddha and Jesus combined. Now, why would I say that? Because the box is here. You can be present with it. Jesus and Buddha exist within your mind. I know there are a lot of people who will say that's not true, but at some level, it's definitely true. I'm not denying their existence as, as, uh, earth, uh, as uh, heavenly bodies or ascended masters or whatever they are. But the truth is, this box brings to you the opportunity to, pre to be present with it. So does this microphone. See? Simple. You can look around the room. Just look around the room and see how much there is to be present with. Or you can be in the dream. And in the dream, you feel alone. There's no one here for you. You're abandoned. You're not loved. You're not good enough. You don't fit in. You don't belong. All of these things exists within the dream. You feel unworthy. You can't do it. There must be something wrong with you. I could go on and on. All these limiting beliefs that form innocently in your mind as a child. But once they go into the mind, the mind is like a computer. And once those limiting beliefs, I'm not good enough, I can't do it, I'm not loved, I'm not worthy, I'm all alone, there's no one here for me. Once they're programmed into the mind, it's like a computer being programmed. And then that computer governs so much of your life and how you experience life, your relationships. So it would really behoove you to become more and more aware of what are those limiting beliefs that have been running your life all these years and then find a way of liberating yourself from those limiting beliefs. Not getting rid of them, that's important. Not judging them, not therapy. Bring everything to conscious awareness, that's all that's required. 
with love, acceptance and compassion. Wow, look at this. I have a limiting belief I'm not good enough. That's amazing. Wow, I'm going to pay attention to that. Oh, I'm, I just notice I don't really feel loved. I don't feel unlovable. I've spent my whole life looking for love. But even 100 people loving me is not going to get through because if I, at a deeper level, if at a deeper level, I have this limiting belief that I'm not loved, the love doesn't get through to me. So we have to go through a process of bringing these limiting beliefs to conscious awareness, bringing the repressed feelings to conscious awareness and allowing them expression in a way that leads to liberation. This is really about liberation. Liberation from the dream, liberation from the past and future, liberation from belief into the world of now. That's all it is. And if people knew what was awaiting them in presence, you wouldn't hesitate. Uh, I'll share with you something that's very interesting. Uh, a little while ago, maybe a month or two months ago, I don't remember, I was watching something on YouTube and it was about near-death experiences. And it was very interesting because what they were describing as they leave the body, they have these beautiful experiences, near-death experiences. But it sounded incredibly similar to what I went through numerous times without dying. So I'm here to tell you, you, can, you don't have to die to awaken into heaven on earth. You don't have to die to awaken into oneness with God. You don't have to die. It's available to you here now. So that's the invitation here with this teaching. Okay. Uh, I'd love to read your comments, but I can't. So I'm going to proceed. Um, Okay, this is uh, from Anna, no, question number eight. Anna from the Netherlands. Um, more and more, I can see that I'm thinking and then I let it go. Then I'm in the moment until the process starts again, the thinking. It is a long process. Are there tools to be longer, more present without thinking? Lots of love from Holland. Uh, from Holland. So Anna from Holland, thank you for your question. This is really fundamental and everyone is going to experience this until they don't. Because, you know, let, let's focus for the moment and, and this I would call this the primary meditation in this teaching. And it's very similar to other teachings, but not, not exactly, or it may not be exactly. I don't know all meditations in the world, so I can't say. But I want to share with you the presence meditation because it's re very directly relevant to this. So with the presence meditation, your eyes are closed and there's no instruction other than close your eyes and be present with your body breathing. Your body breathes in, your body breathes out. There's no instruction beyond that. You're not looking for enlightenment. You have to let that go. You're not looking for awakening. You're just being present with the body as it breathes. It breathes in, it breathes out. Now, it's not going to be that long before a thought arises. So you notice the thought. Now this is very important. You notice the thought, but under no circumstances should you reject or judge the thought or think it shouldn't be arising or thinking somehow you're a failure because a thought is arising, you're not doing it right. You don't do any of that. You just acknowledge the thought. You don't reject it, but you don't believe in it. And what I suggest you say is very simply this. In the same sort of silly face that I've got, Thinking, thinking, it's like with one word thinking, you're saying something to the thought itself. You're saying to the thought in one word thinking, you're saying, I see you, I'm aware of you, I'm not rejecting you, I don't believe in you, you're okay, love you, thank you, and then that's it. You're, you're back to presence. There can't be any hint of judgment of the thought, no hint of rejection of the thought, nor but you're not required to believe the thought either. So um, then you just come back to presence. Now let me tell you something interesting. If you're just present, doing the presence meditation, you're just present with the body breathing, I could ask you, who is present in this moment? Aware of the body breathing in this moment? I am. You see, the I am, it's the I am presence declaring I am. It's the awakened you. It's that dimension of you that is of this moment and only of this moment. So, <clears throat> but if a thought arises and you notice the thought arising, 
Who is aware of a thought arising in this moment? I am. Not a problem. I am is still here witnessing the thought. I am is still here witnessing the breath. You're not trying to get rid of anything or change anything. You're just being present with what is. Now, what the thought is about has nothing to do with the present moment. Don't get involved in the thought. Just notice thinking and back to the body breathing. Or you never really left the body breathing. You're still here. And uh, now let me tell you why that's so important. And, and that's the, really the most important meditation because it's the point of the presence medita meditation is not, underline not, it is not to stop thinking or to stop thoughts. That's not the point. The point of it is to become more and more aware of these thoughts as they arise uninvented. Uh, uninvited and unconscious they just keep coming up what's that thought and you start to notice how silly the thoughts are how un unimportant they are even the thought it's raining you don't need to know that you already know it so um, it, it the the, pre the presence meditation is designed to increase your ability to witness thoughts and not get involved in them I hope that's perfectly clear now I'll tell you why it's so important your mind and your ego has absolutely no power over you in any way whatsoever, no ability to influence you other than by generating a thought which will come up with an associated feeling. And if you get caught in it, if you believe in it or if you reject it, same thing, if you believe or reject, now you're caught in the thought, now you've got caught, gotten caught in the dream. But if you just acknowledge it, like say for example the thought is around the uh, the theme of blame blaming you don't need to do any more than that uh, if you're judging if judging is arise, a judgmental thought with a slight judge judgmental feeling catch it in time before it takes you catch it and say judging 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 very friendly you're very friendly and slowly slowly you you open into mastery of your mind and ego it takes time uh, but it's not difficult and I've provided a very, very clear map for you to follow in the context of step two. How to execute, if you like, step two. Okay. Um. And then, of course, you bring that, Anna, you, you bring that into your day-to-day -day life more and more. You strengthen your witnessing muscle, your presence muscle, by doing the presence meditation. I would say no one watching this should do the presence meditation for less than five minutes a day. But if you want, you can do it for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, I don't care. You could sit all day and do it, it'd be great. But um, I'm not pushing that. I, I'm against any kind of trying. If you try to be present, you won't be present. If you try to be enlightened, you'll never be enlightened. If you try to be awakened, same thing. Just relax. The present moment is already here. It doesn't go away. It doesn't know how to go away, ever. It's not possible for the present moment to leave. And it's not possible for God to leave you. God didn't leave you. The present moment didn't leave you. You left God and the present moment. Where did you go? Straight into the world of the mind, past and future. Then you got lost there. How did you get lost there? How did you get imprisoned there? By believing in your thoughts, your opinions and your beliefs. None of them are true. Who is true? The Christians, the Muslims or the Jews? Or the Buddhists or the Hindus? Who's true? Even the fact that you're a man or, or a woman is based in belief. It's part of our education. You're educated to believe that and to know that, to think that. <clears throat> so you master the art of witnessing not rejecting, not, ju not judging, not, not believing, just witnessing and bringing everything to consciousness. As Jesus said, all that is hidden shall be revealed. I would say that's my favorite saying. All that is hidden shall be revealed. Whatever's still unconscious within you, let us reveal it all into the, the, the light of consciousness that is your own being in presence. You are the revealer. In presence, you are the revealer. In presence, you are the master. Wake up. Remember who you are. It's so simple. Okay, now let me check what time it is. I have no idea. Ooh. Okay, well, we've been going for about a month. Uh, a month. <laughs> we've been going for an hour. And this is supposed to only go for one hour. 
Um, so I'm going to make a suggestion. We'll do this again very soon. In fact, to be perfectly honest with you, and I haven't really, this is not concrete yet, so, but I'm planning on doing a weekly YouTube live stream channel. So every week at a certain time, I'll come on and we'll kind of do what I'm doing here. Hopefully, though, I can engage with you through chat or whatever. But uh, that's my intention. You know, it's important that humanity awakens. And I don't care which teacher you go to, but if, if you find this teaching and my teaching helpful, get very involved. Get so involved. Because this is about your awakening. I'm, it's not about my awakening. I'm already awake. I'm not looking for anything other than to share what what opened up within me with you and how to accomplish that. Also, I, I should tell you that being present is not always beautiful, glorious, mysterious, wonderful, oneness, God, heaven on earth. Often the present moment is ordinary. But that's beautiful. At least you're present, even if it's ordinary, rather than lost in a dream. Even if the dream promises one day to be extraordinary. It's a false promise. So sometimes present being present is ordinary. Sometimes you go very deep and you open into the mystery, the oneness, the magic, the oneness, God, all of it, heaven on earth. I can promise you <clears throat> who you are. I'm going to first tell you who you are. First of all, you are an eternal being. Secondly, you are the energy of love, acceptance, compassion. You're empowered from within. You exist in the realization of oneness. In addition, you are actually a champion of God and you've been on this journey over so many lifetimes for God. God loves you for that. But God would like you to complete the journey now. Now when I speak of God, I'm not speaking of a religion at all or belief in God. It's just God as the silent presence in all things present, including you at the very centre of your being. So get involved. We want everyone to awaken, whether it's with this teaching or another teaching. That's your business, not mine. But what you can do to support yourself, there are many books you can, you can buy and read, and uh, they're all on my website, and you can link to Amazon. There are innumerable uh, videos and audio to watch on the website and in other places, and on YouTube. Uh, there's also the app. I would like to mention the app. Um, we've got an app, and... Uh, it really should, uh, it should have a lot more people on it because it's so good. I don't run the app. That's Jane and Jim's baby. They, they manage it and run it. And uh, they put all the content on there. Um, but it's really interesting. It's really engaging. Even I like looking at it and reading through some of my own words. I, I think, wow, who is that guy? So I guess, I guess it's me. Or it's not me, it's I am. It's the I am that I am speaking to the I am that you are and that's always the case the I am that I am speaking to the I am that you are and in presence we're all one in presence everything everyone is equal the tree is equal to you and to me the dog the cat the elephant the monkey all equal in the in human existence no one is above no one is below not even the most enlightened master is not above you it's just that they're more awake they've realized who they really are that's possible for everyone and not only is it possible it's essential we humans <coughs> have become too destructive in our own consciousness. We now have the ability not only to destroy ourselves, but we have the ability to destroy this beautiful, beautiful environment and so many species on the planet. In fact, we're already doing that. We need to be responsible for it. The most heinous words ever uttered in the history of humanity are the words that refer to we shall have custodian we will be custodians of planet earth i'm not even sure where that's written but i know i know it's there somewhere we're not custodians we're caretakers which simply means we're here to take care of everything that is here on god's earth heaven revealed on earth we should be taking care 
Okay? So let's begin by taking care of each other. Let's begin by letting go of our judgments or taking responsibility whenever a judgment comes up. It's okay if a judgment arises, just don't get caught up in it, don't believe in it. If you do get caught up in it, confess it to God. God, did you notice that I just got caught up in judgment? Oops, that's okay, no problem. There's no pressure here. Okay, folks, I'm going to have to stop. I love you all. And uh, may we all awaken fully together. Thank you very much.